People have said my name is Emma Snapes. I'm head of biobanking in the Infant Centre uh, based in the University College Cork. It's a relatively new centre. It's the first perinatal translational research centre in Ireland. Um, and there we work with many clinical uh, samples. Uh, but I've also worked with, I've had experience working with microbial and agricultural uh, biological resor resources over the years. And I've worked in commercial and uh, academ academic um, environments as well as semi-state environments. So it's, I've seen it all. And the, the funny thing about it is everywhere you get these collections, you have, you have the same doubts. People wonder, are we doing things in the right way? Can we be doing things a little bit better? And I've even found that internationally. I've helped set up um, some uh, uh, perinatal uh, pregnancy biobanks um, in China and in Brazil and some other locations. And it's astonishing that you meet people who have the same concerns in those areas. And it's, it's largely a new profession for biobanking. I'm only going to speak to my work, really, and my experience in working group two at the moment. But um, it's, it's, there's been a lot of development over the last decade or so with huge numbers of best practices, revisions of those best practices, uh, standards developed nat on a national basis, and other guidelines that have been developed. But there's such a plethora out there now. There's a Georges Daguerre, uh, our convener of Working Group 2, has a lovely story of there are well over 80 um, out there. And it, it leads to potentially a confusing area for people, for new and emerging biobanks. Where do we go to? How do we seek the right information for setting up and improving our processes for biobanking? So, um, I was ripe for picking then when um, Jeremy Cahalan of um, Metabolomics Diagnostics came to me in early 2014 and said, Emma, do you know about uh, the uh, standards, the ISO standards that are being developed for biotechnology? And I said, no, tell me more. And at first I was going biotechnology, was that really relevant to me? But then once I saw how the working groups were broken down and I saw biobanks and bioresources, I was going, yep. Uh, big red lights were flashing in my head, so I knew we had to at least get to the first plenary meeting, which was held in uh, DIN, at the DIN, hosted by um, the DIN, which is the National Standards Authority in Germany, and it was hosted in Berlin in uh, May of two 2014. And I was accompanied there by Linda Hendy of NSAI, and I'm very grateful to Linda for holding my hand there, because one of the things that I found, even though I was a little bit nervous, like in amongst uh, this group of internet national experts like saying anything, I saw something that concerned me regarding the scope and with, with Linda just nudging me going, yeah, I'll support you, it's okay, you go, go on. I was able to put up my, my, my paw and just say, look, I, I, maybe that this is, you know, I was able to offer my opinion. And the thing was, I found even at that very early stage, just as an observer, I had an influence. I was quite astonished that... Um, even just with very, very little participation, people were willing to listen to me. So the impressions that I came home from that meeting were, with, were um, th that it is possible to influence um, standards at a very, very basic uh, integral level, and that it's one country, one vote. So Ireland, despite our small populace, has the same size vote, the same weight vote as any other country in the world. And that's hugely significant for me. I, I'm, I'm quite astonished at that, to tell you the truth. And I, I know perhaps um, maybe it's not often said, but that's actually a very, very significant element for me. And largely, and thirdly, probably most importantly for me, it's free. <laughs> um, you got to get yourself to the meetings, um, but it, it, there is no charge. There's no charge for active participation of countries. So we came back with a recommendation that Ireland definitely should be involved. So um, I was very grateful to uh, Dr. Suzanne Bracken from Molecular Medicine Ireland, who, along with Linda Hendy of National Standards Authority of Ireland, hosted a meeting in Dublin where we invited um, national stakeholders and we agreed that there should be active participation by Ireland. Uh, so we set up a national technical committee, which is a mirrors the international technical committee. And we have some um, experts who speak to that. And I see Owen Cutter here in the room today. Hello, Owen. And um, others as well who speak to that. 
We need more experts in that committee. Um, we have experts for working group two, we welcome more, but we need specially experts for other, the other working groups. Um, we, we will try and make those meetings, but unfortunately there's a practical element. At the international meetings, um, the uh, working group meetings often run concurrently, and as much as I tell my dad that I'm working on it, I still not have, have not managed to clone myself, and I probably really shouldn't. Um, uh, but so we do call out for more experts. It really has um, an incredible influence on uh, your own business as well. I have found it um, absolutely um, fantastic because it's a marvelous way to network on an international scale. Not only are you meeting these people every six months, uh, people who are very influential in your, um, in your area, in your industry, but you also have uh, continuous contact with them during the year on drafting committees, via WebEx, other smaller meetings, um, and it is a fantastic opportunity to get airspace with these people. Um, it is, is also offered me the opportunity to significantly influence the, ex, the, the content of the, of the standards that we're producing. Um, and that, that is, that's a, a, a marvelous influence that, um, that, we can, that Ireland can actually bring to the international stage, that we can bring our experience and our expertise and allow us to actually participate at this level. It's, it's fantastic. And um, it's also given me a fantastic advantage because I am here, we're writing the standards, I know what the standards are going to be for the future. It allows me to look at my own processes and um, operations, decide are they good enough, do I, where do I need to improve, and what, what sort of effort I should be putting into it. So it's, it's a great story to be able to be, take back to our stakeholders. Look, there are no internationally acceptable standards in this area at the moment, but we're working on them, we're involved in them, and we, are actually, we, we, we really want to see them there, and we will be ready for them once they come out. So, um, and lastly, it's a great opportunity Opportunity to travel. Um, we, we, and it, it, it is. It can be a little bit scary going to some of the far flung um, locations, but we're always very, very well taken care of when we go there. Uh, the uh, national hosting bodies are fantastic, and I must say, I have received tremendous support from our uh, national uh, committee here uh, with the chair, uh, Suzanne Bracken as chair, and uh, from NSAI with Linda Hendy here. And so I'd like to thank them, and I'd like to thank very much also HRB for my, uh, funding my travel to date. Without that, I wouldn't have been able to go to those places. It is possible if you can't go, you can connect in through WebEx, and I'm looking for, I'll be looking for funding for the next meeting, but it's, it's, you can get involved on a national basis. You don't need to commit to international travel if that's not on your remit right now. So it's, it would be great to have you, um, to have more participation from an Irish at a, at a, at a national level. So I welcome um, uh, any, any, anybody reaching out to make contact with Suzanne, myself, Linda, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today. And uh, I welcome any questions that you might have. Thank you.